الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو الاهدى ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل والله اكبر كبيرا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله الاحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد مالك الملك يؤتي الملك من يشاء وينزع الملك ممن يشاء يعز من يشاء ويذل من يشاء بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير سبح له ما في السماوات وما في الارض وهو العزيز الحكيم له ملك السماوات والارض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا حالك شرح الله له سبره ووضع عنه وزره وأعلمه أن مع العسر يسرا أن مع العسر يسرا وأمره أن إذا فرغت فانصر وإذا ربك فرضا عباد الله أصيكم ونفسي مقصرة بتقوى الله وأحذركم ونفسي من عصيانه ومخالفة أمره لزوما لقوله الحق تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وكذلك في قول الحق تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ قَطِيبًا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُلُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمِنْ طِعْ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا My brothers and sisters, my dearest children, and indeed, we're so excited to see them around us in the summer break. And in probably in a few weeks' time, they will be going back again to school and will not be able to enjoy their company in the masjid. So therefore, as it is the habit normally for me, is that during summer time, I will be addressing the young brothers, the young sisters, the hope of their families, the hope of the Muslim Ummah. Because they are, after all, the asset of the Ummah which we are building so much hopes on. And unfortunately, the perception normally we have about young people and about uh, the specific time or uh, developmental stage in their life uh, is a time of upheaval, times of difficulties, times of challenge, times where they are less productive and more into troubles, when in reality, things are totally different. Allah Azza wa in the Quran have introduced to us the different stages that we go through in our life. Allah has done to us that we go through the first stage when we're first born in this life, in the infancy, والوالدات يرضعن أولادهن حولين كاملين لمن أراد أن يتم الرضاعة ويوم تذهب كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها and then also Allah Azza make us aware of another stage in, uh, in our life which is uh, the childhood وإذا بلغ الأطفال منكم الحلم فليستأذنوا كما استأذن الذين من قبله and there is also the stage of puberty uh, in this, Allah Azza makes us aware of a stage that 
every young man and young woman will be sitting too, which is the puberty age. And then there is a much productive stage that is called maturity, a rushd. Unlike what we hear about in the Western civilization, or the Western perspective of psychology, as adolescence is a, is a time of difficulties and challenges uh, for, for young people. And when we look into the features of, uh, of adolescence or the features of young people in general, we will find that they go through, they have certain features, they have a certain uh, way of life and they have certain potentials. Uh, and, and one of the things that is a, a main feature for, for adolescents or for young people, both sides, men and women, is they like to be the center of attention. And this is why, one of, and this is one of the reasons why maybe they like to dress up in a certain way. You'll see it a lot all the time. They like to wear the most expensive pants or pair of shoes, or they want it to uh, look unique and different uh, uh, so that they can attract the attention. Also, they love to be the center of attention in the way they have their hairstyle. And this is no offense to young brothers primarily, and hopefully the sisters wear their hijab, but primarily you will see them having an unusual hairstyle. It's okay, there's no problem with that. You like the attention, this is maybe one of the ways where you can get your attention, and I said again, no offense, not looking at anyone. They also uh, have the ability and potentials uh, that is uh, unusual, un unique. They, they, they have the power, they have the ability, they have the energy. They can stay 24 hours without sleep. They are able to literally be able to move mountain from one side to another side. These are all potentials and features that Allah Azza wa has given to, uh, to, to youth in a certain stage of their life. Because Allah Azza wa says to us in the Quran, Allah الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعض ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعض قوة ضعفا وشيبا يخلق ما يشاء. These are all things that uh, we're being aware of in our life so that our teens, so that the parents, so that the Murabbeen in the community would be aware of how to handle and deal with youth. How to steer them in the right direction. How to help them benefit from the different potentials that Allah has given to them. Along with these abilities and power, there's also this feature that most of you, not all of them, are fearless. They are reckless at certain point. And that's why sometimes we hear about youth being engaged in youth violence, gangs activities. Once in a while we hear about shootings that are happening around the city. And the city of Hamilton is no exception. Last week in Toronto, in the Muslim cemetery of Toronto, there was a shooting where two individuals were shot, four individuals were shot, one of them I guess got killed. In the cemetery, where one of the brothers was buried after being shot. Also, the day before or two days before that. So youth violence is something that we are, we're, we're struggling with along with other communities in this society in which we're living in. Another feature that the young people have as a result of their growth is that they become physically uh, uh, more capable and they shoot up in their height and they become uh, more attractive. They were more looking, more appealing in their look, uh, along with this physical change in their in, in their life and the uh, 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 introduction of muscles for the brothers and you know the femininity for for the sisters comes also along with that the uh, the the flow or the surge of the flow and the hormones in their body, so they become more attractive to the opposite gender. All these things are not things that we need you to be concerned about or to be to feel ashamed of because Allah says in the Quran Islam does not make us live in illusions. Islam is not theories. It's not a philosophy. Rather Islam is a system of way and a way of living. 
Islam wants you to be aware of who you are, what are your pretensions, what are your shortcomings, and wants you to deploy all the potentials that you have in a positive way. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam introduced to us when he said that the zulu qadama abdin hatta yus'al al marwa. No one will be left alone in the hereafter until he or she is questioned about the world. عن عمره فيما أبلاه وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه وعن ماله من أين اكتسب الورد That's it, it's word by word. لن تزلا تزول قدم عبد No one will be let alone. And then he's asked about عن عمره فيما أبلاه We're having a janaza after this. May Allah have his own have rahma on the brother who have passed away. أفنا means perished. Finished. Completely has gone. You have a certain line here in this area. I was counseling the other day a sister who, who, ha, who ha, whose baby passed away after a few weeks or a few months of this life. I said to her, we have a certain distance from birth until death. However, the time of a traveling varies from one person to another person. Some people take a little longer time, others take a little shorter time, others take a very short time. So be mindful of that. And only he be mindful that. He will be accountable and held at ask about every single second in your life. ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه وقيم عتيد. Nothing you utter from your mouth except will be recorded for you, and you will be held accountable for it. وعن شبابه في ما أبلا. The words of the Hadith of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم are selected carefully. Abla is a unique word in the Arabic language, which means Bali al-Shay means that worn out. You still have it, your shirt is worn out, Bali al-Shirt, meaning to say you still have the shirt, you're still able to wear it, but it's no longer have the glimmerous look of being looking you. It's worn out, but still there, and that is your youth for it. You have the prime time of your life in your youthhood. This is the most productive time in your lifespan. The Prophet ﷺ asked you to pay more attention to that particular stage in your life. وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَى How did you spend your life in your youthhood? I'm not going to use waste your life in your youthhood. Was your youthhood a time of neglection, a time of recklessness, a time of uh, of evil and, and violence, or or you know uh, being diffused? وَقَدْ أَوْرَثَ الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِهِ فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْصِرٌ وَمِنْهُمْ سَامِعٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ Which category you fit in? Are you from those who يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفٍ Worship Allah Azza on the edge in a sabo khiram ta'ala bi wa salat al fitat al qalab ala wajh al asr dunya wa al akhirah. Which category you fit in? You are living in the most prime time of your life. Be aware of that. The potentials are all there for you. Do not waste it. Take advantage of every single second, not minute in your life, in your youthhood. My advice right now to the parents. My advice to the Imams, Wallahi our youth are miskeen. They are lacking the right leadership and mentorship in their life. They lack the ulama rabbaniyin, the Imams rabbaniyin, the murabbiyin who are rabbaniyin. Because if we were to have murabbiyin who are rabbaniyin, belong to Allah Azza wa Jal, they have no interest in this life and the attractions of this life, then the conditions of our youth will be different. Yes, we're living in a very corrupt, relative environment to our perspective as Muslim Yet at the same time, we lack those leaderships, those mentorships that can provide for our youth the icons that they will be inspired with. Look into the Prophet Sallallahu life. And let's take one example from the Sahaba or the youth of the Sahaba. Mus'ab ibn Ubaidah, the most spoiled young man in Mecca. They say that when Mus'ab used to walk in the street, 
The girls would tell that he walked in that street because of the perfume he used to wear. His clothes were the fi finest clothes that people can afford at that time or can find in Mecca. His mother was so rich and she loved him so much and he loved her so much. She spoiled him. All the clubs of Mecca for the prestigious people were welcoming Mus'ab ibn Alayr and was hoping Mus'ab would spend the time with them because of the lavish lifestyle he had. Mus'ab heard about the Prophet as so many of the youngsters of Mecca heard about him. Though he did not need to change his lifestyle, he had everything he wants in life. Yet there was something if I may ask you to come forward as much as possible because I'm being given the sign to ask you to come forward because Alhamdulillah the message is getting packed and this is a good sign, Alhamdulillah. Uh, normally all the messages will ask you to stand up and then sit down if you're able to do it, Alhamdulillah. If not, just fill the, the spots in front of you or ahead of you so you're able to accommodate as many people as possible, inshallah. Just move, it's okay, inshallah. So this is going to give it a, uh, you know, half a second, half a minute to do that, inshallah, quickly. Musab ibn Umayyad heard about the Prophet heard that there's a man who's talking about something new. Curiosity as a young man, curiosity as a, as a person who likes the change, as we said, one of the features of young people is the integration of a, 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 a powerful, uh, rational abilities. Uh, they are more, no longer, uh, yes, uh, and, and I will do whatever you want from me. They always like to talk and ask and question. <coughs> Their cognitive abilities is changing. And that's what happened to Musa who did not want to just live an average life. Therefore, he reached out to the Prophet heard the Quran from the mouth of the most honorable man that Allah created on earth. The Iman flow from the heart of the Prophet touched the heart of Musa and his whole life changed. 180 degrees! He became from the followers of the Prophet meeting along with the young Sahaba in al arqam of the al arqam house to learn from the Prophet the basics of Islam. He was keen to keep his Islam secret as the Prophet encouraged all the followers in the early stages of da'wah. Yet, his, his Iman could not be held, could not be covered. It leaked out to his mother that Mus'ab Saba changed his fate. He was angry with him. She jailed him. She tortured him to make him change his mind and he'll never change his mind. He fleed from his captivity and went with the first group of Sahaba to Al-Habash and the first migration and come back again from the first migration and went back again the second migration to Habasha and the Prophet Sallallahu was in Mecca struggling to find the supporters for the deen of Allah Azzawajal and when Mecca gave up and he went to a five and the five also closed the doors in the front of the Prophet Sallallahu he found a glimpse of a hope from Yathrib and the people of Yathrib said to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Rasulullah we need someone to teach us our deen. There was Abu Bakr, there was Umar, there was many of the prominent Sahaba, Uthman The Prophet carefully chose Musa. Why Musa ibn Umayyad? Musa ibn Umayyad had the intellect, had the passion for the deen of Allah Azza He was Rabbani. Honest from the heart, believing in what he's preaching, and he had the style of da'wah of the Prophet. When he was sitting in the hospitality of Asad ibn Zura'a in one of the gardens, Usayd ibn Hudayr heard about a man, a young man coming from Mecca to invite people to a different place. He was furious and came to him with his sword and said, how dare you to come to my, to my property, to my own farm, and to invite people to change their faith. He looked at him after As'ad ibn Zura'a said to him the following, 
Here comes one of the leadership of Medina, of Yathrib, to you. Usdukullah hafif, Ya Allah. What does Usdukullah hafif? He said to him, be honest in front of Allah Azza in your da'wah to him. Wallahi, we need right now du'a of our sadiqeen in their da'wah to the young people. We need someone who yasdukullah Azza wa Jal for our youngsters. He said to him, I heard that you are a man of intellect. Sit down, listen. If you like what I have, you take it, you like it, I wrap my stuff and move. It didn't take much for to say the Muhabbat, to say, what would you do to become a Muslim? He came back and become a Muslim. And then he went back again to his friend Mu'ad ibn Jabbar, the other leader of the Muslim, uh, of, the, of the people of Yathrib, because it was not Medina yet, and did the same thing to him. And he accepted Islam, and Sa'd and Mu'ad ibn Jabbar went back to, uh, uh, to his own people and said, to hold the tribe, the population of Medina. I'm not going to talk to you or interact with you socially unless you believe in La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He's a leader. Everybody said right away, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. This is the song of the Almighty. How did he meet Allah Azza wa Jal? He met Allah Azza wa Jal in Sudan. We need a leader in Sudan. صدقوا ما عاهد الله عليه فمنهم من طبع نحوه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدل تبديل الله أكبر هنيئا لمصحب المعاملة He lost his right hand his left hand he held the eye of the flag with his two عضدين with what slipped from his arms and then he was killed in front of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to say to him يا رسول الله I die from the Sabi'i. The Prophet recited on his grave, وَمِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالُ صَلَقُوا مَا عَمَدُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَرَى نَحْمَدُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْقَدُ وَمَا بَدَّلُ يَفْرِيدَ We need our youngsters to be inspired by Musab ibn Umayya. We need our Murabbeen to be inspired by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be a Rabbaniyin dua to everyone around them. Islam does not only pay attention to youth, male youth, to shabab only, referring to, to, to the male youth. There is another Sahabiyyah that I love always to talk about her. Asma bint Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu. The daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, as siddiq She embraced Islam in the age of 14, early stages of adolescence or mid stages of adolescence. She become a giant woman from the first day she embraced Islam. She is, after all, the daughter, daughter of a Sadiq who have given everything he has to the name of Allah, including his family. She was called that of the Taqayim, the by band because she helped the Prophet and her father when they were migrating to wrap their food and she took her own bam and cut it in half. One half she used to wrap the, the luggage of the Prophet Sallallahu and the other half used it to, to wrap her own with the rest. And the Prophet Sallallahu gave her this title and told her, Allah replaced you with a bam in the garment of Egypt, from the garment of Egypt. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated, she was the one who brought the food to him. A brave young woman. A brave young woman who was filled with Iman. When Abu Jahl came once to look for her father and the Prophet وسلم, he harshly knocked on the door. She opened the door and she found a huge man. Because Abu Jahl was the uncle of Umar al-Khattab and Umar al-Khattab was very strong and a huge man and so was his uncle. He looked at her with anger. Where's your father? She said, I don't know. She knows where her father is. She knows where he's hiding. She delivered food to him every day. She said, I don't know. The, the, the seal says, Abu Jahl he slapped her on her face that her earrings fall on the ground. To make her confess and say where her father is, she did not. Her grandfather was not Muslim at that time, and who was blind, said to her, your father left, right? She said, yes, Sayyidina, 
He said, maybe have taken all his belongings and all his savings to spend it on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said to him, no, ya Abata. She gathered some stones and put them in a bag in the safe where they keep the money. And she guided him with his hand to touch that. And she said, he left this for us. She used the muwahada. She left this for us. And he was content. If he left that for you, then it's okay. She knew that Allah lan yudayyana. She had no money, but she had full trust in Allah. This is the young woman who got married later on to as Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, the son of the aunt of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She gave birth to Abdullah ibn Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, the first male child to be born to the Muslims in Medina. Ya Allah. Muslims of Medina were overexcited when he was first born in Masjid Qiba, the area of Masjid Qiba, they took him and hauled him above their heads and they toured Medina to prove to Yahud that, that Muslims were not influenced by magic and they would be giving birth to males. Because no male was born after Prophet arrived to Medina. And this is the same night this is the same Faris. This is the same man who stood in front of the tyrant that is known in the history of Islam as Al-Hajjaj, Ibn Yusuf al -Tawati. When Al-Hajjaj surround, surrounded Mecca and used al manjariq a cannon, a shells, shells, he, he, he bombarded Mecca, the Kaaba, with shells, al manjariq he came to his own mother. Abdullah ibn Zubayr came to his own mother and said to her, Ya Ummah, I came to consult with you on something. She said, what is it, my son? She said, he said to her, Al-Hajjaj with his army is surrounding Mecca and they are shilling the Kaaba. And no one is with me. They all have left me out of fear and out of hope that Al-Hajjaj will bribe them. Should I stand and get killed for what they believe in? She was blind at that time. He said to him, Son, if you betray your own beliefs and surrender to Al-Hajjaj, forbid the Rajul al Ya Allah, Ya Allah, listen to this. A woman said to her own son, If you do not get killed for what you believe in, bid the Rajul into a man. You're not a man. Stand for what you believe in. And he said to her, Ya Allah, I'm not fearful of death. I'm fearful what the Hajjaj will do to me after death. She said to him, Why am I going to shut the cell phone after that? What would hurt the she after it's killed of what's done to her? She said to him, Come, son, let me give you the last hug before you get killed in the path of Allah. He came close to her and he gave her a hug. I just said to him, son, what is this? He said, mom, I'm wearing my shield. She said to him, take it off. Allah You think this is a, uh, these are stories of religions. This is only the time of the Sahaba. Those of you who are watching what's happening in Palestine, so last week, the mother of Ibrahim ibn Adursi, Surrounded, surrounded in the old town of Nablus, not with a handful of soldiers, but with hundreds of soldiers come forward. By inshallah, I'm about to finish. With hundreds of soldiers who wants him to surrender. And he was saying to them, By Allah, you will never touch my body alive. I'm here to die for the sake of Allah and he got what he needed. He got what he was asking for. 
He got the shahada along with his two friends. They were they were bombarded with a very powerful bombs. They were burned alive. When people come to his mother to support him, to support her, she gave the salute and I said, I'm not mourning the death of my the killing of my son brother. I'm celebrating his death as a shabi to Allah as Please, my brother is talking about, about supporting the people of Palestine. They are doing a job that many of us have failed to even keep up, keep up with their work. In Allah, I thank you so much. اللهم إن عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إيمانك أنا واصينا يا رب بيدك ماضي يا رب فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاء ونسألك الله من كل اسمك ولك سميك من نفسك أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خوتك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندي الذي أن تجعل القرآن العظيم رضيعا جعل جلاله المؤمن أحسن اللهم حبنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين وجعل المتقين إماما ربي أوزعنا شكرا لك فلك نعمت علي وعلى والدي ونعمل صالحا الله وأستغفر في ذريتي